You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 26th of July and I'm Roland from Milford. There was some really interesting data released in Australia last week that showed in the June quarter a record number of firms said the inability to find labour was significantly constraining their output. The same survey also highlighted decade-high capex intentions pointing to a very strong period of investment over the next 12 months. Despite this, we are seeing increasing near-term uncertainty as the lockdown in Sydney looks like it's nowhere near ending. The RBA was planning on reducing the quantitative easing from $5 billion per week to $4 billion per week in September. However, last week they did walk back from that, saying that if conditions remain uncertain, they will maintain their $5 billion weekly purchase rate. In the US, weekly jobless claims increased to 420,000, which was quite a lot higher than consensus at 350,000. As a reminder, jobless claims are people who request to receive unemployment insurance. This increase is surprising given enhanced unemployment benefits are ending and companies are apparently becoming more aggressive about filling vacant positions. Now, this is a weekly index, so we wouldn't get too hung up on one print. In equity news, the US reporting season is in full swing and it's been very strong to date with most companies beating and beating by quite a bit. Now look, there are a huge many companies that are reporting. However, what you are seeing consistently is a very strong consumer. The house value is up, their incomes are up, their savings are up, and their confidence is up. JP Morgan have seen credit and debit spending up 22% versus pre-pandemic levels. Now this heightened demand is causing a lot of supply chain issues, which is translating into skyrocketing freight costs. Labor is also a big cost bucket where you are starting to see more pressure. JB Hunt, a large US freight company, said it's the biggest shortage of truck drivers they've seen in 37 years. Turning to Australia, Oil Search had an interesting week. On Monday last week, they held a conference call to discuss the CEO leaving. On this call, they were asked whether they had received any bids for the business. They explicitly said they had received no offers in recent times. Now, the next morning, Santos released a market statement saying they had in fact proposed a merger with Oil Search in June, but this had been rejected by the board. The bid valued Oil Search at $4.25 a share, which was a 16% premium to its closing price last Monday. Autodesk also confirmed it was walking away from the acquisition of Altium. This saw Altium's share price fall throughout the week. Altium came out a couple days earlier and said no higher price had been offered by Autodesk. However, Autodesk in their statement said they verbally offered a higher price. This is again an example of boards having a lot of control over what shareholders hear and see as it relates to M&A conversations. Now, Crown had a week to forget. The council assisting the Victorian regulators said Crown was not fit to hold a Melbourne casino license. Now, the Victorian Royal Commission will release their recommendations on the 15th of October, so it'll be very interesting to see what they have to say. Star also pulled their bid for Crown, given the lack of engagement from Crown and some concerns around the outcomes of the Victoria Royal Commission. Look, this merger makes a huge amount of sense to us, but we saw it as a low probability outcome given what's occurring and the current form that Star had proposed. Now, looking to the week ahead, US reporting season is entering a particularly interesting time, as this week we have Alphabet, Visa, Apple, Microsoft, Starbucks, PayPal, and Facebook all reporting their June quarter results. It will be very interesting to see how these businesses are managing the rapid reopening of the US economy with a focus most certainly on their outlook statements. Domestically, look for a potential increase in fiscal support. We're seeing more companies such as Qantas pressure for additional stimulus to help with this current lockdown. We do believe there will be some additional stimulus or support packages from the government, given this lockdown looks like it will last for some time. However, we don't expect it to be as material as it was last year. However, it will still help. New South Wales is also aggressively pushing for an acceleration in the vaccination rate. They are redirecting all vaccine initiatives to southwest Sydney and western Sydney, the two areas most impacted by this lockdown. So watch closely for an acceleration in vaccination numbers, given we also have a lot more Pfizer vaccines in Australia now. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.